Hi, it's Jeff Chalmers here from discoverdoublebass.com. That's the home of video double bass lessons on the internet. So please go and check that out if you're interested in seeing more. Um, and if you're a beginner and you enjoy this lesson, you might wanna have a look at the step-by-step -step beginners course as well. So today's lesson, we're getting back to basics and we're having a look at the thumb on your left hand and how that affects your double bass technique. You'd be surprised how much it impacts your tuning, your intonation, and also your dexterity and comfort. So if you want to address those issues, check out this lesson. Well, to start off with, I want to give you a quick overview of what exactly the thumb is there for. What does it do? What function does it serve when we're playing? And it really does two things uh, that I think you should be considering. And the first one is that it helps stabilize the hand it doesn't help you lever the strings down. It doesn't, you're not squeezing to push the strings down, and we're gonna talk about that later. But what it does do is to just give yourself a bit of a reference point to keep your hands stable. If you imagine you were walking through a room in the dark and you were following the wall and you had your hand out and you were kind of touching it as a bit of reference to help you, you're not pushing against it. You're just uh, using that to help you move through the room. It's a similar kind of thing. The second function that it performs is it helps with shifting. So when you're playing and you want to be shifting around the bass, it will help you to measure the distance. Between the, uh, between the notes. So as you're gliding up and down uh, the uh, fingerboard, on the back of the neck, your thumb is lightly touching uh, just to help you measure that distance. So essentially, stabilizing the hand and uh, shifting are the key functions that it performs. Now let's have a look in detail at the actual technique on what you should be doing with your thumb. Well, the part of the thumb that's making contact with the actual uh, back of the neck is the fleshy part of the thumb the ball part here. So this is how it rests against the neck. It's the fleshy part and it's not the tip. Now this is a real telltale sign for you. If your uh, hand is either gripping the neck, that's obviously a problem, but also if your thumb is turned and pointed towards uh, the neck, that's not such a good sign and it's likely that you're uh, gripping uh, the the neck with your hand and squeezing which is something we want to try and avoid the thumb should be really relaxed very passive it's just gliding against the back of the neck uh, to help you stabilize the hand and with your shifting so it's the center part here that's making contact with the back of the neck now where is the thumb in relationship to the fingers this is a very personal thing and it depends on your hand shape broadly so if I have a look at mine, for instance, it's somewhere in between the first and the second finger, depending on what I play. So it's not always opposite the first finger and it's not always opposite the second and sometimes it's somewhere in between, but it really depends on the shape of your hand. Let me show you what I mean. So if I just play some random bits and pieces. Let's have a look where it comes to rest. Now at the minute, it's kind of closer to my second finger And now let's have a look. And now it's slightly nearer to my first. There it's kind of in between the two fingers. So it's always keeping nice and relaxed. But I'm not forcing it to be next to one finger or the other. The only thing that I'm trying not to do is to let it drag too far behind as I shift. So I don't want it ending up on this angle. When I shift, it's just lightly moving behind the hand. You can see there's a bit of movement there. As I'm shifting in this direction towards the ceiling, it's gonna drag a bit and it drags more as you move towards the floor. So. It tends, now it's nearer my first finger, but as I'm moving back, yeah, there is a bit of a shift. Uh, it is dragging slightly, but it doesn't tend to go past the second finger on the way back. You don't do this, for instance, that wouldn't be very comfortable. But on the way back, you can let it go past, sorry, on the way down, you can let it go past the first finger, but try not to leave it stationary and kind of pivot like this. Now, there are teachers who recommend pivoting with the hand 
like this and leaving the thumb in position, but it's just not something that I teach. So I suggest that you allow the thumb to rest behind the first and second finger, whatever feels more comfortable for you, and you have a bit of movement as you move around the neck, it's just brushing against the neck, you're not squeezing. Now, what happens when we move across strings in this direction? So let's say when we're playing on the low strings, let's look at what happens to the thumb. I'm playing on the E string at the minute. And you'll notice the thumb has moved from here to here because I've had to actually move my elbow slightly closer to the corner of the bass. I've had to slightly rotate my body. And here we are, so I'm playing the E string now. And if I was to have the thumb over this side, it would lead to the hand kind of cramping down like this, and I'd have to squeeze, which is not what we want. So I'm actually allowing the thumb to move across, and it also works in the opposite direction. So if I was playing on the treble side, then my thumb is likely to be slightly over this way towards my face, but as I move to the low side of the, the, the lower pitches, the thumb goes away from me. It goes towards me on the higher notes and away from me on the lower notes. Now sometimes you can play with the thumb slightly further across on the higher notes. It's not so much of a problem, but it is a problem if you move your thumb uh, over towards the lower pitches because you'll end up cramping up the hand like this. So let's have a look at a few potential pitfalls. Where might you be going wrong if you're having perhaps pain in your thumb? Well, one issue is that you may be really um, leaving your thumb behind as you shift. So it could be too extreme and it'll end up looking like this. I often see players that kind of shift and they lose their hand shape because their thumb doesn't follow. So it needs to be lightly held in place and then you can move around. Another problem could be that you're not using the neck heel. So if I'm, if I'm moving up the, the fingerboard, I'm, you can see my thumb is coming to rest against the neck heel. And I've done a whole lesson on this, which I'll provide a, a link for in the show notes uh, that you can check out. So make sure that you understand how to use the neck heel, because that will really transform uh, the way that you play in tune in this middle area of the bass. Now, let's move on to the final biggest problem, and that's people squeezing too much. And there are frankly, a few different reasons why you may be doing this. But I think the main reason is that you're not utilizing arm weights. And I'm going to talk you through how to do that now. So the way that I recommend standing with the instrument, um, or sitting for that matter as well, is to allow the instrument to come to you. Don't move up to the bass and shuffle up to it, uh, because you'll end up with the instrument too vertical. Now let me show you what I mean. If the instrument's correctly positioned, we start with it vertical, um, and my arm's straight and I'm holding the neck heel at the neck, and then I allow the bass to come back to me and resist the temptation to walk towards it. Honestly, pretty much all of the students that I've had at some point have this issue, particularly as you get caught up in your left hand technique, you shuffle up to the bass and before you know it, you're too upright. And at this point, as the bass is too vertical, my arm weight is just going down the neck. So the only way that I can play is to squeeze with my left hand and we want to avoid squeezing. So. You have the bass straight upright, you lean it back towards you in a way that feels comfortable. And height wise, it's a personal preference thing, but somewhere that means that, you're, that the nut is up just above eye level, around the eyebrow, the middle of the head, and also that you're not holding your arm up to play the notes because it's in the lower positions because the bass is too high. So here we have this issue of, of arm weight that you may not be using. Now, if you are using, all that you need to do is to use the bigger muscles to hold the arms in place, which means slightly opening up on both sides, your left and right arm actually, because we use uh, arm weight in the right hand as well, which is a lesson that I'll link to <laughs> that describes that. But with the left hand, you hold the arms slightly open, so the armpit slightly open, the elbow slightly up to give myself a straight arm and wrist, and then you allow the weight to pull back in this direction. Can you see what I'm doing here? So if I'm, I'm holding the arm very gently with my bigger muscle groups to allow me to utilize the weight. And I think maybe that's the key thing. I often say use the arm weight. Well, if we, we're not just using the arm weight, we have to keep the hand in position. So really we're utilizing the arm weight. We're making sure that it will help us pull the strings down by essentially positioning the arm in such a way that it's natural for it to come back like I'm pulling a pint of beer 
or a lever or something. It's this direction. And if you think about arm weight, it will reduce um, the amount that you squeeze with your hand. So I'm not squeezing, I'm just letting the arm come down and keeping really relaxed in the shoulder, consciously thinking about that. And there's a lot of relaxation, but at the same time, the hand shape is maintained by gently keeping the hand open and the, and the position of the bigger muscle groups of the arm is maintained. So I can then utilize the arm weight to help me pull back, which ultimately would be going towards the floor. And just to remind you, if it was upright, then the arm weight would essentially be, be going straight down and you would have to end up squeezing. So I want you to be able to be remain focused on the music that you're playing and addressing this issue of the thumb and the use of arm weight will really help you play for longer periods of time in comfort. So make sure that you practice in front of a mirror, video yourself, get some feedback from a teacher and just check that you're doing things in the best way possible. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. If you have and you want more, please go and visit discoverdoublebass.com and you can check out the lessons library there. Also, if you are watching on YouTube, there's a thumbs up button. Please press it and let me know that you've enjoyed it. I'd appreciate that and it will help us to share the videos with more people. Keep practicing and I'll see you next time.